Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we have a very special guest on today's show, Mustafa Shivji, who is also very affectionately known as Musti to many of you around the world. Many of you know that he has been battling with heart issues since 2012. His story is nothing short of miraculous. He has survived two very serious heart attacks. He has also at one point had four stents in his heart and has spent hundreds of nights on hospital beds, sometimes three to four months consecutively. At some point in his life, he even had several pieces of machinery or equipment attached to his body, not only on the outside, but inside his chest as well to help with the proper functioning of his heart. Today, he sits here with us with a brand new heart, courtesy to a successful heart transplant surgery. It is my honor and extreme pleasure uh, to have him share his story with us, with all of you today. And I hope that we will not only benefit and learn from this, from his experiences and struggles, but share this information with those whom we feel would benefit from it. Musti, thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, it's my with honor us today. to be here. Asa, thank you so much. Um, what I wanted to do is start off today's episode by talking about your life over the last five years. So since 2012, mm -hmm. maybe you could take us through uh, some of the key moments or the pivotal moments that, that you experienced uh, since, since that time. Mm. <clears throat> well, first of all, it's an honor to be here. And uh, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, yourself uh, for having me here. Uh, actually, it's a miracle on its own to be, you know, here today, after, yeah. today, after three months uh, being, you know, uh, in the hospital and uh, going through the whole uh, cycle of getting a new heart and the way I got it and everything. But uh, since 2012, actually what happened is it all started very fast. I had no idea actually, you know, that what was going on or mm. anything. Uh, what happened is I was on a volleyball court. Uh, playing volleyball, a sport that I love, you know, in New York. And uh, nothing, you know, nothing going on, same thing, uh, just playing. And all of a sudden, I just felt a little heaviness. And uh, I thought probably, you know, eating uh, beetle nuts, so probably, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably that did it. Yeah. So I had a drink of water and I went back and I started playing. And all of a sudden, I just collapsed. Collapsed? Just, just collapsed on the floor and that was it. You know what I mean? And wow. For about four, four and a half minutes, I was gone. Dead? Just completely shut down. Wow. Yeah, it's like uh, nothing happening, you know, and I was on the ground. Now, personally, I had no idea what happened. Uh, after when I woke up, it's when people came to see me, my, my friends and, you know, yeah. brothers and stuff. They came and told me that this is what happened, mm. you know, and uh, well, I was on the floor. And the first thing that happened to me is I had no idea. And the other thing is, while this was going on, I saw myself in a tunnel. In a tunnel? In a completely dark tunnel. It's like as if I was just going away or something. Right. You know, but I had no idea what it was. And it's just that I'm right there maybe sleeping or something. And all of a sudden, you know, they tried reviving me. But uh, I heard, the first thing I heard is uh, a lady's voice telling me, this man is gone. Wow. You know what I mean? As soon as I heard that is when I, when I, when I came back. When you woke up? Yes. Wow. When I came back and I was looking around and I found myself in an ambulance. Okay. Uh, so everybody was looking at me and at that time I was like, man, I need water. Right. But now because that happened, they could not give me water at that time. Okay. So they took me to the hospital. The first hospital they took me to uh, was not the right one. So they kept me for like 20 minutes over there, and then they took me to the right room with North Shore Hospital in New York. And that's when, you know, they, like for 20 minutes, they kept me there. They, they were checking and stuff. And right away, they took me in and put four stents. Four? Yes. They put four stents in, and they told my wife and mom who were there that his heart is damaged. Okay. He has a damage in the heart, and, you know, this should be something that it should keep on going. So I was there for like a couple of weeks and then I went home, 
you know, I tried losing weight, I lost weight. But what was happening is then the water weight would start building in. Mm. Why? Because of the heart had become weak. I see. Yeah, so medications and doctor visits and all this happened. Uh, this went on for like three years. Obviously, your life had changed. I mean, changed oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, smoking, I had given up. Okay. You know, I was uh, on vape. You know, right, right. I was not taking, you know, no smoking, but uh, vape was still there. Yeah. But I had tried to uh, mellow down on eating and stuff. Uh -huh. But, you know, as time went on, you know, you go, you go back to your... Of course, um, your old habits. Habits, yeah. yeah. So that's what happened. Then, you know, this was going on, you know, everything was fine. I mean, normal life. I yeah. thought it was a normal life. Yeah. But, you know, the little that I knew was that heart was slowly, slowly, slowly going down. Really? Right. Now, the way the doctor was telling me, you know, and he was a great doctor at that time, the one I had... Uh, he was telling me that, you know, in 2013, he kept on persuading me to get a defibrillator. Okay. I was against that because the thing is, I was saying, if I put this in and it mm. shocks me, then what do I do? It's like, it's not going to shock you till something happens to you or your heart cannot. Oh, uh, so it until out. a certain point, then exactly. it kicks in. Okay. So then, <clears throat> uh, you know, 2013, I had that installed. Okay. And what now I mean, that this is inside? Yes. Uh, so it's not on the outside, it, no. it sits yeah. inside. So what they do is on your left shoulder, yeah. they cut you open okay. and put up, it's like a pacemaker. Okay. Nowadays, science has come up to that, uh, you know, that they put a uh, pacemaker along with a defibrillator in one unit. Ah, okay. Yes, so this one had both. Right. <clears throat> they put it in, they, you know, they took me in for like four or five days. And after that, they put it in. And it looks normal. The only thing is there's a bump here okay. that you could tell that there is something in here. So that went on, you know, nothing, I had no idea. I mean, it was in, you know, and it went on. 2014 passed, you know, checkups, all this was going on. 2015 right. is when my life changed. Okay. It was uh, April and we had our uh, tournament. Volleyball. volleyball tournament volleyball. in New York. Uh, uh, it was like a major, major event. Uh, 24 teams were participating. Wow. And of course, I was a secretary. So I was taking care of the whole, you know, uh, the entire tournament, you know, right. uh, trying to raise money, you know, the funds and getting teams to come in and everything. So we had everything set up. Everything was fine, you know, but uh, little that I knew, I was stressed out. So, you know, it was Friday night and uh, we had the opening ceremony and we did that. I gave a speech. After giving the speech, we had a video, we showed everything, you know, everything was done. Now people were going for food, you know, having some lightings right. and stuff. Yeah. And I went to our Sheikh, Sheikh Fayaz Jaffa okay. from New York. Uh, I went to him, I requested him to please leave the prayers the next day. As we were talking, you know, and all of a sudden uh, I just collapsed. Just like, like, the, like the one in 2013. Yes, just, but this just... one was worst. This one was, the way I went down is, uh, he had no idea what I was saying. After I finished that, please lead prayers tomorrow, he said he was, I was talking to uh, in a language that he could not understand. So the speech was, was slurred then. Abs absolutely. Yes. That's what happened. So after that is when I went down and the way I was told for nine minutes, gone. Again? Nothing, nothing at all. So it's, just just like 2013, yes. no pulse, nothing. Nothing at Again, all. Again, it happened in yep. 2015. Yep, and I was lucky that there were doctors over there. Dr. Ari Darsi was there, you know. Uh, Riaz Rentullah, who works for the ambulance, ambulance service, yeah. He was there, and uh, some others were there. Uh, Shabnam Jafar, Dr. Shabnam Jafar was there. And I cannot forget uh, Tahira Bai, Tahira Ismail. Okay. Yeah, she works as a nurse, you know. She was there, and they were trying to revive me again. Okay. Uh, they got the ambulance to come and, uh, uh, you know, I had no idea. What I heard is my defibrillator shocked three times. So it worked? Yes. As, as it was supposed to? Absolutely. Okay. The first time it shocked, nothing happened to me. The second time, after a couple of minutes, it shocked again, nothing happened. The third time it shocked and the cable burnt. Wow. Yes. And that's the time I came up. But personally, I have no idea I came up. The next thing I remember is waking up in a hospital bed, 
uh, three days later. Okay. And finding out that my head was hurting. Okay. It, was, it was severe headache, and I found, I found out that I had a concussion. But now when I woke up, uh, I had by my side my wife. And uh, I looked at her, and I was like, uh, I had no idea who she was. Oh, at that moment of time, I had no idea who she was. And I asked her, I said, where am I, you know? And she's like, uh, well, you're in the hospital. So I looked at her, I said, I have no idea, you know, it's like... So she spoke to the doctor, and the doctor said he's in a state of a shock because of the concussion. Oh, yeah. The only way this would happen is maybe, you know, uh, it would come back to him, mm. or if something shocking happens to him. Okay. So then she came and she slapped me on my cheek. Really? Yes. <coughs> when she shocked me, it came back. <clears throat> it came back right away, and I, and I asked her, I said, Kiran, I have a tournament. What am I doing here? So right after the slap, you remembered? Yes, right away it came wow. back. Wow. So I'm asking her, I said, what am I doing here? Right. And she's like, well, the tournament is over, you know, and today is Tuesday, and the tournament was over on Sunday. Wow. Yeah, so three, four days had passed, you know, and <clears> then <throat> I woke up. Now, I think it was a blessing for me to go through this at that time, because as soon as, you know, came up and I, I told her, I says, where are the kids? Mm. And she says, well, they're at home with your mom, yeah. you know, and uh, I said, then why don't you have them come? Because I was missing, you know, my son uh, Anwar Ali and Mazar Ali. So I yeah. said, why are they not here? Please, you know, call mom to come here. So as soon as she called and they left home is when we found out that the house got burnt. There your was house. a fire. Ah. There was a fire at the house. I had no idea. <clears throat> she, she was the one who knew about it. And as soon as they left the house, the, the, the house went on fire. No idea why, how, but that's what happened. So, I mean, that was a blessing, you know, that they came to the hospital. Mm, of course. Yeah. But at that time, this, is, this was going on. And I was in the hospital for two weeks. At that time, you know, they were going through all this. Right. And after probably a week or so, they put a, a stent in the back of my, uh, my uh, you know, in the back here, okay. by the bone. And I had no idea what it was, but the doctor told me that because you're building up water uh, pressure or water inside your body, uh, we'll need to have a certain uh, uh, thing like a pillow that you'll have to sleep on. And every morning it will tell us if you have any water retention oh. or anything, we will know it, you know, right there. So that's what they did. So it went on. You know, I came out from the hospital, uh, went back home, but I couldn't go home because the home was on fire already. Right. So I went to the hotel, and I, that's when I found out that the house was on fire and everything. Right. So, you know, little that I knew that, well, I ended up in a hotel, which was like a hospital bed, you know, I mean, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's what happened. And uh, after that, you know, this went on for two, three months. You know, I went to, back to work, you know, and uh, I was getting tired. You know, all this was happening, going to the doctor visits, and, you know, the, I mean, it was, it was something that I had no idea what I was going through. Right. But there came a moment, you know, in, in time that uh, I was telling myself that, you know, why me? You know, why mm. has this happened to me? I mean, why? I mean, I don't understand. Because I'm so much connected into uh, mosque work. Correct. You yes. know, and all this, and all of a sudden this has happened to me. But one thing good that came out from this is I never lost hope. You always said you had a good support system Absolutely. around you as yes, well. Yes, yes. My family, family yes. my mom, you know, my wife, you know, I mean, after, you know, if my wife was not there, I would not be sitting here. And your friends worldwide. Absolutely. Course. Absolutely. And that is one of the reasons why I always updated Facebook. Right. Always updated Facebook that, you know, it would give me some kind of pleasure to read that what my friends, you know, are thinking about yes. or what messages I'm getting you know, from the media and duas and all these, of course. Uh, you know, duas from all my friends and some people I didn't even know who were praying for me and that's what helped me. Right. You so this is, this is something that I, I, I want to discuss later on. Mm -hmm. We'll come to your, the social media yep. and how you stayed in touch with everyone in spite of all of this going on in your life. Uh, let's fast forward a bit to now. 2016, 2017. Okay. Take us through the, sure. the, the, the heart transplant right. and how that process, because I know you relocated from New York yes. to Orlando. So yeah. let's, let's discuss okay. a little bit. Uh, tell what us happened, a little bit more. What there. happened is then in 2016, 
there was a problem. In fact, at the end of 2015, yes. uh, I was at, the, at work and I got a phone call from my doctor saying that, where are you right now? So I said I was at work and uh, the first thing she said is, wait right there, I'm going to come and get you. Okay. So I was like, I hope everything is well. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Uh, the only thing is I need to talk to you, you know. So I said, all right. So the next thing I do is I call my wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she comes to pick me up from work and we go straight to the doctor. So we went uh, to the doctor and she, she says that, you know, it looks like your kidneys are going to fail because of all these uh, water pills that you take. Right. So we need to do come up with some kind of a plan where your kidneys don't get uh, spoiled, you know. So the first thing she did is uh, she put me back in the hospital. Okay. And she put a pick line. Okay. A pick line is something they put from your arm. It goes through here to the heart. Mm -hmm. And there's a plastic, uh, a water, uh, a bag, which is tied right here outside, like a bag. Okay. Like, okay. you know, uh, a traveler's bag, you sure. know, you put your money in, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So that's where the water... Uh, bag is and that what happens is every time it pumps into the heart directly into the heart directly okay. into the heart and nothing happens to the kidney or lungs or anything oh, else so what it does it lets the heart pump more or if there is water retention in there it tries to suck it out so that happened for two weeks but after two weeks she called me again and she said you know what now it's that's it this is it there is nothing I can do, mm -hmm. and I have to take you to Mount of your hospital for a checkup. Okay. So that's what we did. It's in Bronx, New York, and uh, that's what I, uh, she took me on a Friday. We went there, the checkup was there, and the first thing I heard from the doctor is, I hope you can uh, cancel all your plans, if you have any plans, because the next uh, room that you're going to is your, your bed uh, across the street, uh, sixth floor, and that's where you're going to be. So I did not understand this. And meanwhile, when I went there, they told me that tomorrow you're going for surgery and you're going to have an LVAD put in. Okay. Left ventricle assisting device. Okay. For those who have heart uh, problems or heart issues, maybe you know, <coughs> a doctor has touched on them. A left ventricle assisting device is something that is equivalent to a heart, but without replacing a heart. So what happened is, is it gets attached to the heart. Okay. Okay. So what they have to do is do a, like a transplant. They have to open your chest and uh, put a device in. It's a pump. It's a small pump. And it's attached to the heart. Exactly. It's okay. attached to the heart. Now, for those who know the vice president of uh, America, uh, the former vice president, uh, Mr. Dick Cheney, he had one. Okay. Yes. I didn't know he that. He had wow. the uh, LVAD uh, 2, and which is a little bigger one. <clears throat> okay. So what happened is, in my uh, case, I had an LVAD 3, which had just come out. Okay. And they, I was a trial, you know, based uh, uh, somebody who went through a trial. And that was this small, you know what I mean? And they opened me up to put, put that in. So the first instance, I refused. Right. I said, I'm not going to have my chest open twice. Because the first time opened me, put me a, a pump, <clears throat> and the next time you find a heart, you open it again. I'm not going to go through that. So the doctor said, well, you need it. And I said, no, I'm ready to stay in the hospital for as long as it takes. And he said, it probably takes a month. I said, no problem. You know, I have the insurance. Everything is fine. I'll be in the hospital. So I stayed for a month. In that month, every week, I was going through surgery. Okay. Yes. The surgery I was going <clears throat> through is they used to put a pick line. The reason they put a pick line is because if you're in the hospital and if you have a, a, a line right here where they draw blood or give you some liquids or whatever, that could get infection. Okay. So they were afraid of that. So what they did is they put a pick line from here. But every month or every week, they have to replace it. Okay. So I used to go through surgery every week. Now I was doing fine. Everything was fine. No problems. After a month, I started going down. And the doctor came and told me, you have 48 hours. Wow. Yes. In 48 hours, uh, you know, don't blame me or whatever if something happens. Right. So after that, I had no choice. And my family being on my side, it's like, you know what? We have to do this. We have no choice. So that's what happened. The next morning, the first thing, I went for surgery. 
It was about a nine hour surgery. They opened me up, they put the pump in. The next thing I know is I woke up with a pump in my heart. Inside. This was open, you know, and it was hurting. And the first thing I was doing is I was asking for water. But now because they had closed my, my you know, voice box, uh, nobody could hear me. Yeah. So yeah, for at least, uh, I would say about for 12 hours, <clears throat> nothing was allowed, you know. And that's, that's, that's what happened. So after that, I started recovering with that. And what happens is once they put that in to give it power, they have a, they cut a hole here on your tummy and a wire comes out and goes through a computer, which is right here, wow. which is outside the, the body. Right. And it's like you get a waist, a coat, and it's a small thing which has two batteries on the side, which gives it power and <clears throat> this computer, which handles that power. So that's what goes on. After about three weeks, three, between three to four weeks, I left the hospital, went home. Now, the problem with that was, I mean, I was alive, you know, and everything, but I could not do a lot of things that I wanted to do. Did you have to wear it all the time? Absolutely. 24-7? Absolutely. Wow. Yes. 24-7, when I go to sleep, I would unplug myself and put myself into electric. Wow. Yes. Into electric and then go to sleep. <clears throat> and that computer from here would stay behind. And this is the only way I could sleep is on my side, on my right shoulder. I could not sleep on my left shoulder, or I could sleep straight. That was it. Right. The problem was whenever I wanted to take a shower, I would not be able to take a shower mm. because this computer will be right here. The cable will be connected right connected, here. No yes, water. Yes, yes, I yes. couldn't put water here, so I had to take a sponge bath. Right. So my wife used to give me a sponge bath. Wow. That was the only, you know, I mean, the 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 the, uh, the bad part. side or the yes. whatever the hot side. Yeah, yeah. the hot part. But uh, you know, I was I was alive. You know what I mean. And everything, but at that time you 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 know you think about life, and you say you know what how for granted did I take everything? Correct. You know what I mean? I mean it's just the way it is. I mean you know you think about it, but you don't really you know appreciate it till you go through this. Till you go through it, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what happened. Now I went through this. Of course, I could not work anymore. I was not allowed near. Uh, the print room, you know, because I work for IBM. Right. I work for IBM as a customer support specialist, so I always have to be near the printers, on calls and everything, but right. I could not go to work because they refused. So I was on disability. And, uh, you know, waiting for a heart, waiting for a heart, six months passed, a year passed, <clears throat> and I was like, you know what, I'm not getting a heart here, you know what I mean? So I started doing s uh, research of, uh, you know, what's the closest that I could get something fast. And I came up to two uh, hospitals that, uh, you know, had a, had a good uh, uh, way of getting a heart faster. Okay. So one was Cleveland Clinic, <clears throat> mm -hmm. which is in Ohio, okay? And the other one is uh, Tampa General Hospital in Tampa. These were the two hospitals. Now, in Tampa, we do not have our community over there. We have Muslims, you know, but you know, I mean, being close to the community, we don't have. Right. The best, closest place was Orlando. Correct. Orlando, we have a big community. We have about uh, three, four mosques over there. You know, JIC, HIC, right. you know, IEC. So all are there, you know, and I said, you know what? Tampa is about an hour, an hour and a half away from there. So why not move to Orlando? So that's when I moved to Orlando. This was about nine months ago. Okay. Moved to Orlando, settled down with this batteries and stuff. Sometimes it was a problem because I would forget that I'm running out of charge, okay? I would drive away and then figure out then, you know, remember, oh man, I forgot my batteries. Because these batteries will last 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And after 12 hours, you have to replace them. So what happened at that time is I would call my wife and tell her I'm stuck on the road, I have no batteries and this is starting to beep <laughs> now. Right. So she would come up with another car and give me batteries and stuff. Wow. So that was one, you know, setback with that. But, uh, you know, for about three, four <clears> months, <throat> I was not able to get hospitalized or anything, you know, registered uh, in Tampa because I moved from New York and Mount of Your sending the paperwork to uh, Tampa was a little, you know, uh, iffy, iffy. Okay. So after about four months, uh, it went through. When it went through, you know, I went to the hospital saying I had a chest pain and that's the time all this started. Okay. 
and they took me in, uh, they asked me uh, all the important questions about, about the insurance. Was this towards the heart replacement? Yes. Okay. What kind of insurance you have? Because they had already known that I have an LVAD mm. and the next step for an LVAD patient is uh, getting a heart transplant. Correct. So they took me in, went for the uh, regular visits, regular checkups, uh, Dr. Mackey. Uh, he is the doctor that was in charge of my you know, transplant and uh, it is him who got me a transplant. And what happened is I was uh, about a month and a half into it, mm -hmm. in Tampa General. And uh, one night, uh, one afternoon on a Wednesday, I got a phone call that, uh, Mr. Shivji, uh, if you can please drive to Tampa, we have a heart ready for you. Wow. And, you know, I was, this is the first time I'm getting a call. I was like, yeah. are you serious? Or excited or, yeah, I was yeah. very much excited. I just got <laughs> hopped into the car and I drove, you know, right to Tampa. Uh, got in, they took me in, registered, everything done. You know, went into the surgery room. They put me to sleep. You know, I told everybody, you know, in fact, the, the surgeon was a Syrian doctor. Yeah. yeah who has moved to uh, Tampa. And uh, he was a Muslim. Wow. Yes, he was a Muslim. And uh, he, he, in fact, when he saw my pendle, Allah, yes. and he said, Salaam Alaikum. And wow. uh, yeah, you'll not be allowed to wear this anymore. Yeah. So you'll have to take this out. So I said, you know what, do me a favor. Let me have this in my hand. Mm. And you do whatever you want, you know, and, right. but it's going to be right there. So that's why he allowed it. It was nice enough yes. for him to allow yes. that. Yes, he yeah. allowed it and I had it in my hand. Uh, after eight hours, you know, I woke up and still I had no heart. Meaning no, so they, nothing they, was... they didn't do anything. Uh, I still had my batteries and everything. So when I woke up, I asked him, I said, what happened? Yeah. And he's like, uh, brother, I'm very sorry. You know, the heart that we, uh, we had, the last test we did... Uh, we found out that the heart had cancer. Oh no! Yeah, so I mean, you know, Must I was have been depressed at the time. Yeah. yeah, I was depressed, but in a way, I was like, Alhamdulillah. At least, you know, before they put it in. Before they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, at least we found out this. But he's like, don't worry about it. You know, uh, go back home. Yeah. Inshallah, we'll call you. Right. All right. All heartbroken, you know. Yeah. Uh, I drove back. I drove back. I would say probably about half an hour. And I got a call back from the hospital. While you were driving back, While that is, yeah. Back. That Mr. Shivji, can you please come back? Uh, we have a heart for you. Wow. So I personally, at, at that moment, <clears throat> thinking that this might be a joke. Because I just left the hospital. Correct. And you're telling me that I got another one in, in just an hour? No, it's not possible. So I told the, uh, in fact, uh, the coordinator. <clears throat> um, that uh, I, 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 you know, something, something is not right. And he's like, sir, this has never happened. Never happened. This has never happened. And, uh, you know, please do me a favor and come back. So I still had my band, you know, the... Uh, the hospital band. Exactly, the yeah. hospital band, yeah. the name. So I went back and they took me the same way. Okay. Because I had this and you, they, everything, everything was the formalities fine. were done. Perfect. So, yeah. so, took me in and uh, this time I had the same doctor, same the surgeon. Same guy. Okay. Same surgeon was there. And everybody was like, are you serious? You're back? You're back, yeah. yeah. And that's it. I woke up after nine, ten hours and they had already done surgery. Amazing. And I had a new heart. What a story. Uh, yeah, I had a new heart and I was in the ICU. Slowly, slowly, uh, you know, regained. And this time, it was a little different. Different uh, in sense that the pain was still there, but it was not that as the last time. Right. Because probably I went through this once before. Uh, maybe I didn't feel it that much, but it was a little bearable. It was not like before, you know, and slowly, slowly, you know, when I gained uh, uh, conscious and, you know, everything. And that is when I realized that, uh, thank God, I did not lose hope, you know. It's, it's in, such, in a, such an inspirational yes. story, yes. you know. Um, and, and what I wanted to ask you now yeah. is, um, obviously, since 2012, yes. uh, you probably met tons of specialists and doctors and surgeons yes. and all the people that you, that you met. What I want to ask you now is, and obviously this is for the benefit of, of our viewers, mm -hmm. is what are some of the most important pieces of advice that you were given mm -hmm. um, on health? in general and how to protect not only our health but our hearts mm. um, from, from future predicaments uh, like this. Do you have a few 
um, important tips that you could share with us that would benefit all of us uh, well, moving forward? Yeah, sure. I mean, personally, my opinion is number one is uh, stress. Stress. Stress is number one. Okay. Try to be stress-free. Okay. I mean, what happens is I know every human being in this world has stress. Yeah. You know what I mean? But try to, like, you know, not to have too much stress because it's not worth it. Okay. Because stress will take you, you know, away. I mean, it's, you know, the way it happened to me is when I asked my doctor, he said, well, it's probably generic, you know, you had it in your family. Mm -hmm. Your father, your grandfather, probably this is why you had it. Mm. Because uh, it did not make sense. I did not have high blood pressure. Right. You know, and uh, the other thing that I think is smoking. Okay. Shisha. <laughs> these are all right. negative part to Babe, the heart. Shisha, all of it. Oh, yes. <clears throat> all this is no good. I miss it because I used right. to be a chain smoker. Okay. But uh, that is, I think, the number one you know, uh, reason okay. that you could go through this. Now, the person who donated or who gave me the heart, I found out that he was a 30 or a 31-year-old uh, person. Wow. I'm, yeah, I'm not allowed to know if it's a he mm. or a she uh, or <clears throat> what uh, caste, you know, what belief, anything. And even uh, the first time I will come to know is after one year. But in that one year, I will... The only thing I will be allowed is to write a letter thanking the family and giving it to the doctor. Wow. That's it. You know what I mean? But uh, coming back to the point is number one is stress. Stress, then smoking. Smoking and try to he eat healthy. Anything to stay away from specific? Well, meat. Red, Red meat, meat is the first uh, thing. I mean, I eat it, but I try to like avoid, Limit, yeah. uh, avoid myself into that, <clears throat> you know. And these days, I try to eat a meal a day. So just one, one, one meal a day. Probably in a, uh, you know lunchtime, I'll probably have a banana or right. a juice or something. Okay. But other than that, I will have one meal a day uh, just to uh, you know make sure, you know. What I mean, my weight stays the same because right now, you know, all these pills and steroids and this, you know, the weight right. goes up. Okay. Try to keep your weight low because mm -hmm. that is another factor. So exercise, the more heavy you are, yeah. the more harder, the more heavier your heart has to pump to work, you know. Because look, in life anything is possible. Of anything course. could happen anytime. Somebody not smoking, you'll get a heart attack. Yeah. But other than that, try to be, you know. Of course. Anything that you were told you should eat more of? I mean, we stay away from red meat, but yes. was there something that they told you, eat more of this? Well, no, I'll tell you something. When uh, I had the LVAD, they told me, stay away from the green. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. No broccoli, no salads, anything green, stay away. Wow. Must have been happy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> because of the blood thinners. Ah, yes. okay. And now I've been told... Green greens, is the way to go. Green is the way to go. Yes. Okay. Have green, but uh, not allowed grapefruit. Right. Uh, these uh, oranges, uh, orange juice that uh, you know you get these, uh, uh, you know that are not freshly squeezed. Uh, those juices, no. Right. We don't have that. Okay. You know what I mean. Good. Now yeah. we touched on this a mm -hmm. little earlier, and uh, um, I know. I mean, you're we're on, we're Facebook friends as well, yes. and uh, I I noticed that throughout since 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, you were very um, active. You were posting your updates, you know, sharing them with your friends. Right. And, and, you know, we would know what's going on. You would have daily updates. Today mm -hmm. this happened, today that happened. This is my, my progress at the moment. And I would see that a lot of people would respond, would post on your wall and Absolutely. comment on your messages sure. and send you uh, their best wishes and their prayers. Mm -hmm. How important was that? And I'm going to come to your support system later with sure. your family, your mm -hmm. immediate family. But this is now your extended family, oh, yes. your social family. Mm -hmm. How important was their presence, on, at least on your computer? Oh. Um, <clears throat> it, was, it, was, it was awesome. Because I've heard that you know, social media, this, you know, it takes a story away or it does this. Personally, to my opinion, I don't think so. It's probably the best use of social Absolutely. media, if anything. Absolutely, because the way mm -hmm. I used to post... Uh, you know, the way I used to do it is everybody used to uh, send me messages back. Right. Uh, you know, get well soon, you know, or we are praying for you. Right. We are praying for you from Karbala, you know, wow. and all this. Oh, yes. Used to get a lot of those. There are some friends that I had not met for a long time. 
I would get messages from them. And some of them, you know, may, used to make me cry because uh, it, they would say, you know, you being an Azadar of Imam Hussein, you know, and uh, being, uh, you know, highly, you know, uh, into all this, uh, uh, and you're going through this, inshallah, it's a test, you'll go through Correct. it, you know, and stuff. That used to give me a lot of morale, a lot of boost, saying that, you know what, you cannot lose hope. Right. Yeah, this, you know what, you, there is no way, because there are so many people, some of them don't even know you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. They would even, you know, send a message because they are probably, re, you know, your friends on Facebook. They probably saw that on your... Correct, correct. You know, so and, by extension, exactly. obviously, and, a lot yeah, of... And you would get some... Uh, you know, Alim sent you a message. Wow. Yes, yes. In fact, the thing is, I still remember eighth night of Muharram, mm -hmm. 2015. Mm -hmm. I was at Mefili Ali in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And Sayyid uh, Dr. Ammar Nakshawani, uh, he gave a speech. He gave a lecture over there. And when he saw me entering the, the mosque, uh, he gave a, a lecture on uh, heart. Wow. On a heart transplant, and are you allowed to give? Are you allowed to take? You know, uh, we have four marajas. Uh, each maraja came, you know, uh, the reasoning and everything. So it was like an open book that he wow. had opened, yes. And uh, that is one of the ways I came to know about this. Of course. That, okay, you know, this is possible. I can have this, you know, and everything. But Facebook, uh, awesome. Excellent. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Take us through now inside the, mm -hmm. the four walls of the hospital or your home, now your family, your immediate family, this is your wife, your kids. Right. Um, you know, tell us, what was the dynamic there? Um, must have been obviously very emotional over, there's oh, a roller yes. coaster of emotions, I can only imagine. Oh, yes. uh, maybe you can shed a little bit of light on how that, uh, how was that, uh, that dynamic? Well, actually, the thing <clears throat> is, it is very important to have a, a, a family next to you. Because there comes a time when you're in a hospital bed, you feel all alone. Of course. You know what I mean? You're all alone over there. Half the time, they cannot be there because, you know, you're going through all this. And uh, the other time, you know, they are there, it's like, oh, wow, I see my kids. You know what I mean? My firstborn, I named him after my father, mm -hmm. you know, my marhum father, you know, my late father. Uh, so I would, I would be eager to see him. Of course. You know, when he would come in that, you know what, uh, maybe Allah can give me life. Just for him, you Just know, for him. yes. And, you know, I mean, my mom's prayers have always been there with me. Right. You know, she, in fact, after my passing away, my, my, my father, you know, I was young, but she was always on my side. Uh, you know, so that was something that I, I could not replace. Okay, and, you know? and what about, let's personalize it a little yes. bit. So to you yourself now, what do you think you may have done in, in, in your life yes. that you feel that, that kept you going? or has brought you to where you are today? You know, maybe you can take well, us a little bit well, to I'll tell, tell us something. about that. Uh, my support of my, my, my wife, Okay. I would absolutely uh, uh, give that the number one priority because if she was not by my side, I would not be alive. Right. Because what she went through, you know, with what I went through is only I can know what I went through. Mm. But she, you know, sees me in that, that uh, state and uh, she could not do anything, but you know, uh, she's always there, you know, without her, I would not be anywhere. That's one. The other thing is family, you know, mom, you know, my sister, everybody. Right. But I would say something, maybe it was blessing of Allah, you know, from the young age that I was able to serve the mosque, uh, you know, since Mabasa, where I come from, uh, from that time, I used to go into the forge, you know, when you used to yes, alum, yes. if you remember, I remember that, forge, yes, yes. Yep. I used to run in there just to go take charcoal and start, you know, doing oud Correct. and all this stuff slowly, slowly, that volunteering service got into me <clears throat> and then I moved to New York, you know, and I became the uh, muki, the social worker for eight years. Okay. I was the muki of New York Jamaat, wow. uh, yes, and a, a volunteer and always being there as a reciter, as a zadar, you know. That really has helped me out to where I am today. Because I'll tell you something, without uh, the blessings of Ahl al-Bayt and without the divine, uh, I would not, not be sitting be here, here with you. So yes. my, my personal uh, opinion or my personal message to anybody who is watching this uh, is, you know what, never lose faith in Allah. And 
do not uh, be away from the mosque or the community. Absolutely. Whatever you can do to help out, you know, you never know when that is going to help you. Of course. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you uh, who are watching today who might have so many questions. Uh, please comment in the, in the comment section below. In fact, I will also be sharing with you on the screen the email address for Musti. Sure. And uh, he would love to hear from you if you have any questions, if you know anyone who's going through uh, something like this, or even just preventative measures. If you'd like to know more about what uh, Musti went through, uh, please reach out to him, email him, and uh, by all means, he would be more than happy uh, sure. to, to, to respond to you. Absolutely. So I hope you have, uh, you have enjoyed uh, today's, uh, today's episode. Uh, please share your thoughts with us, like I said earlier, and uh, Musti would be more than happy to, uh, to respond to all of you. Um, in concluding today's episode, on a slightly somber note, um, today is July the 10th, no, July the 9th, sorry. Um, and yesterday in uh, London, England, my aunt, uh, Sakina Akbar Ali Ahmed Karim, uh, sister to my father, Muhammad Reza Karim of Mombasa, passed away in, in London, UK. She was also the math teacher in primary school yes. for, for Musti in Oshawa Academy yes. in, uh, in Mombasa. It is my humble request to you all if you could please kindly uh, remember her with uh, Surah Fatiha. And uh, inshallah, I will uh, see you in next week's episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.